Hello viewers. Welcome once again to another educative episode of African Confessions HD right here on Extraordinary Africa. My name is Solution Anko. If you are still new in this show, we publish lifetime confessions. Usually we publish anonymously for their own safety reasons. Listener, you are having a challenge, you are having a problem, don't go to the forest and commit suicide. Freely send your confession to us. Don't be shy, don't be afraid. Our WhatsApp number is plus 263-775- 597-775 plus 263-775-597-775 or you can contact us on our email address fidelgochagmail.com Listeners today in this video I have this story of two brothers who went uh, to the village to take a charm and the charm has wiped away the family it all comes from the influence of the brother. I'll be reading through the confession. Listeners, without wasting much of your time, let's go straight into the full story. The confession is as follows. I hope I find you well. My name is Simon, but please do not disclose my identity. My brother is the one who came back to our native country from a foreign country. He came back from work with this demon. This thing has destroyed the whole of the family. A lot of relatives are in graves as I speak now. My brother came with this idea and I regret accepting that idea. The idea of us going to a village in Eskwatin for rituals. We are brothers born in a family of four. Two boys, two girls. My brother was a bus driver. He worked in a foreign land there for some time. He was the breadwinner for our family. He was doing everything for me, for my sisters, our parents, paying school fees, doing everything we wanted. The food we eat, he was the one buying everything for us. So he was out of the country. He was in the Democratic Republic of Congo driving a bus there. We only talked over the phone asking how is everyone, how is home. No one knew the actual thing he was doing and we didn't know he was doing evil things there. In Democratic Republic of Congo, he went to a traditional healer and took something there so that he can continue to be hired. What he told us when he was about to die is that it's been done by most people and those people who are clean won't find a job in Democratic Republic of Congo. So this pushed him to those extremes. I don't know what exactly he did there, but we heard he went to a traditional healer, did something so that the bus and the company will be hired. He did everything for us. Sometimes, at some time, he informed us he was getting married in December, so he was to be in the country. He said, I will come with my girlfriend, my wife-to-be, and we will do our traditional engagement party. This came to pass. The traditional wedding wedding was done. My brother got engaged to this peace-loving woman who was later killed for what he didn't touch, for what he didn't knew, just because we needed money. So after my brother returned here, he never returned to Democratic Republic of Congo. We didn't know why. My brother was being hunted by the police in Democratic Republic of Congo. They caused death of many people in Democratic Republic of Congo, facing negligence allegations which caused a head-on collision of two buses and a lot of people died on that head-on collision. My brother survived because it was a thing they planned. He didn't went as they promised each other. The one who sent him was the owner of the bus. Instead of the owner to share the money with him, he just left it like that and my brother a later on faced the consequences because he was the one known by the police in the negligence case because he was the driver. The owner of the bus would just say, ask the driver. He was the one with the bus. So my brother came back here. Police were hunting him. We started having misfortunes in our family. 
People died. Our wives died like chickens. A year won't skip without a funeral. Our sons started not to get married. Ladies not getting married. Boys tend to be thugs, thieves, drug yards, vandalizing properties at community stations like clinics, stealing, doing all sorts of things which cause everyone in the area to hate the family. Everyone in the area hated us. They were naming us names. Brother invested. He managed to buy two taxis whilst out of the country. He continued with transport business here. My brother didn't want me to be suspicious or to take action. He went and took a charm so that I can forget I can't complain. He can just use me pretending to be like promoting me, saying, you are the manager of my taxes. Look after the cars. Look after the boys. Tell me what's needed. And he will be spending his time at his house. I'm the one to do all the donkey work. When the tax is in, in an accident, because the taxes were always in accidents, I could be the one answering the questions at courts every. So over the time I got married to this beautiful woman who was later on killed in these rituals. We were blessed with two kids. The first born was a boy, the second born was a girl. The second born, the girl started to be mentally ill. I went everywhere. I went to medical centers. I went to Sangomas, to prophets. At medical centers, they said they didn't, they, they didn't solve the problem. They said she is okay and are even confused what's causing this because as we look at her, she is fine. That's when the brother, my brother, my blood brother told me, let's go to this other Sangoma I know. I regret accepting going with him. We went to that place and the Sangoma poured something like a powder into my face. And from that time, I am always controlled by my brother. The Sangoma told me to sing after him. From that day, I didn't know exactly what was happening. I only knew my brother telling me that your daughter will be fine. Let's do this ritual. Instead of what we went there for, our core business, solution for the daughter who was suffering my brother started convincing me to accept doing such a ritual and said, I will give you one text. We'll start afresh our business. So we did a money-making ritual there. I saw stories about money-making rituals and I was listening from this show since it started last year. It might be a last day. If I'm not mistaken, I have seen a lot and I am one of those people who did those rituals. Tell everyone who is listening to you, to your channel. Don't try it. Don't ever try it. The rule I should follow for my business, for my wealth, for my daughter to remain well, I should attend every funeral of a woman in my village. I should know every funeral. It doesn't matter. I have business meetings. I had to go to my rural area and attend a funeral. That's what it is. And it's associated with dead people, the ritual we did. Tell your friends, tell people around. Don't ever try to go and get a charm, a tokolosh, a snake, a flower, so that you can make money. Nothing is for free. Please tell them. Tell every, Tell them every day. I am living a very difficult life. Now our relatives, most of them are dead. We killed parents. We killed extended families. They are not making it in life, those who are alive, because of that. And that is my confession. I wish to go and confess to my relatives, but I know they will attack me. I need advices. I saw many people who have similar incidents, like what I am facing. I need help as agent, as agent as possible. This is my confession. And my brother later on died. He died last week and he exposed everything he did to me and everything he did when he was in democratic republic of congo everyone is confused now that is my confession thank you so much my brother for sharing this educative uh, confession to us we have learned from that confession uh it's a lesson i'm sure for the past seven days 
I don't know uh, what is happening. We have posted a lot of these ritual confessions. Two people who are listening, let's learn. Let's learn. Let's learn and live a better life. Nothing is for free. The devil will never be our friend. And we should learn. My brother, you need to move forward with your life. Find someone. It might be friends of your family. It might be uh, some extended, extended relatives. Tell them your story. Go and sit down with your relatives. Explain everything from the beginning. Explain everything. Kneel down before them. Tell them I'm not going to repeat it. Please, my family, forgive me. You need to confess. You need to confess your sins. You need to find a God-fearing church. You need to start having a better life, a normal life. This is not normal. Before we go any further, listeners, uh, let's have... uh, a look at some of the comments from our previous upload. I sacrifice servants and wives for my wealth. Uh, I'll read every comment. This is said. So many people have done these things for money and the soft life only to find that you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. That was uh, a comment from Queen Sheba. Thank you so much, Queen Sheba, for your contribution. Jeneti Nicheka Zulu, run to Jesus Christ to deliver you. Ruth uh, Buzaiti, rituals are abomination in God's eye. Repent, turn to God, and give your life to Him. Otherwise, you face consequences, bro. Remember, God is coming, judge people, and no one can escape it. It will be for eternity. Make a right choice. Thank you, my sister. And there's this one, uh, Maruta. Maruta. He needs to confess. Generally, meaning he must not leave anything. He must read First uh, John uh, chapter 5, verse 5 to 10. Especially read verse 8 to 10. May God give you strength to confess. Don't listen to the devil telling you that you rather die. In the beginning, he is one who gave those thoughts of getting wealth. The fact that you are still alive, it means there is still hope for you. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution. Tambu Dai Nyenwa, confess and break the convents. Thank you, Sister Nyena. Mm, and Neo Molefe. The thing with rituals is that these sangomas are uh, deceptive. You are not allowed to change your mind or reverse it or stop. That thing is tricky, but Jesus Christ is the only solution. And there was another food, another comment from Neo or Molefe. Kneel down in your own privacy and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Exhale and uh, uh, and Lord unto him you give and protect you forgive yourself and surrender your life to him and your soul will be free he won't judge you tell him everything you feel lighter he will set you free indeed uh, and there was this user OP9 UJ8 IJ leaving the house is not a solution anyway he goes there, uh, we will follow him. It's a spirit, spiritual problem, not physically one. Going to a Sangoma is going to make your case worse. The only way is Jesus Christ. Only pray he is ready and willing to welcome you back. And there was a comment from Baptist. Repent, give your life to Jesus Christ and be get baptized. Find a church that does deliverance. Moving to our next comment. This was Victoria Medupini. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. First John 
uh, chapter 1, 8 to 7, get a Bible and read uh, those passages. Confess your sins to God and do restitution to people you have done evil to. I think uh, in our next upload, we'll read First John. Uh, we'll read First John for everyone. Uh, I, I, I hope this will, will help us. And our final comment User I6HH6GP8Y, repent quickly. Jesus is coming soon. Stop saving Satan. You put you to hell. What can you profit again the whole world um, and lose your soul? It's better to be poor and enjoy everlasting life. It's better to be poor and enjoy everlasting uh, life. That's uh, those were comments. Um, a previous upload and they are also helpful to you my brother i hope you are listening i hope you are listening um listeners extraordinary africa wherever you are listening from thank you so much for the support thank you so much for everything you have done for us